Hello everyone and welcome to Ingrown Toenail Removal Surgery, the game. I don't know why it's a game, but it is, and we're gonna play it. So obviously, if you guys are um, kind of grossed out by mutilated bloody body parts, you probably shouldn't watch this video. You can tell from just the, like, the first screen here that you're gonna see some things being jammed into some toenails. Some people find that kind of disturbing, okay? Just imagine taking like a, a toothpick, putting it in your toenail, and then kicking a wall. Before you scrub in, this surgery may contain graphic procedures inappropriate for children or squeamish adults. Sounds awesome, let's play it. Hello, and welcome to Surgery Squad's virtual ingrown toenail removal. I'm Dr. Jeff, and I'll be guiding you through this procedure today. Thanks, Jeff. You seem ingrown great. toenail happens when the edge of the toenail grows down and into the flesh of the toe. When this occurs, there is usually a moderate amount of pain, redness, and swelling around the toenail. An ingrown toenail is usually caused when extra pressure is applied to the toe due that to is a disgusting that are too tight foot. or too loose. Improperly trimmed toenails, foot or toe deformities, injuries, and fungal issues can also be contributing factors. There are some ways to treat an ingrown toenail at home to relieve some of the pain. But remember that you should never attempt to remove an ingrown toenail yourself. Oh, if you're I'm a glad diabetic you said that. and have an ingrown toenail, it is recommended that you go to the doctor immediately. Now that you understand the causes of an ingrown toenail, let's put on our gloves and remove one. <laughs> Why not, right? Ready. So let's begin by disinfecting the toe. Okay, we can disinfect the toe. If that's what you really want, Dr. Jeff, that's what we'll do, okay, buddy? Now, we need to numb the toe with a local anesthetic. We'll have to inject the anesthetic in several locations around the toe. That sounds like a fun thing to have to do. Wait, did I even do the... Didn't he just give me something else I had to do? I didn't even do it. I just clicked continue. Should I restart? I feel like I should restart. This, this surgery is not going well. Dr. Jeff, are you even watching what I'm doing here? What the hell, man? Okay, this is the part that I skipped because apparently Dr. Jeff doesn't really give a shit. Click and drag the iodine to sterilize the area. Click continue when done. Or you can just click continue anyway, because nobody gives a shit. Here you go. There, now that looks a lot better, right? How long can I even do this for? Is this like a thing that I can keep on doing? I can do the entire foot if I want? <laughs> Why not? W while I'm here, I may as well just do the entire foot, guys. Come on. You watching, Dr. Jeff? You making sure that I'm doing this okay? Is everything going all right there, buddy? I hope so. Because I have no freaking idea what I'm doing. I'm just making this guy bleed a little bit. That's fine. Great. Now we'll wait a few minutes for the toe to get numb. Five minutes later. Okay. Great. They got some little transition music in here and everything. Because they really want to be accurate here, guys, okay? <laughs> now that our patient's toe is numb, place the special tourniquet around the toe. This will help reduce the amount of blood coming from the wound. Once you've done that, we can move on to removing the ingrown portion of the toenail. Okay, you can shut up now. Seriously, just let me do this thing. There you go. Fits like a glove, guys. Fits First, like a glove. carefully slide one blade of the nail anvil under the affected nail. That's too much for me, buddy. I don't want to go cutting anyone's nails open, but okay. If you say so. There you go. We're going to go down the nail until Ugh. we feel a little bit of resistance. Our patient's going to feel some pressure as we cut away the ingrown nail. Wouldn't you feel resistance anyway if you're jamming something right into someone's skin? Resistance would be you puncturing skin, but okay. We'll just keep on doing it, buddy. It's going great. Look at those snips. All right. <laughs> I right. love the sound it makes. Take the forceps and carefully remove the ingrown nail. Is, that, is it just going to pop right out? You know, you didn't really cut a line down there, but if that's what you want to do, that's cool. It's just yank that right out. I like how they had the little green it's stuff in there. It's getting kind of messy in there. Let's clean up that blood. I think that's probably a good idea, buddy. It's a good idea. Your call, anyway. You know what's up, right? See that small bit of pale yellow substance right there? That's pus. It looks like the patient has a bit of infection in the toe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Firmly great. squeeze the edge of the toe to get as much of that infection out as you can. You want me to do what? You want me to squeeze the pus out of someone's toe, Dr. Jeff? Really? Can you do that for me? I mean, I don't really feel like I want to squeeze pus out of anyone's toe today. I thought I was just ripping some toenails out, but no. Of course not. There's pus squeezing going on as well. I mean, this is the shit I gotta do if I wanna be a real doctor, I suppose. I'm assuming that right now I'm some sort of, like, intern at a medical school or at a, at a, at a hospital. I don't know. We'll see. Just, just give it a... Oh, yeah. Great. Ooh. Yummy. Now what? Thank you, Dr. Jeff. 
That toe is starting to look much better, but we're not done yet. Next, we're going to apply some phenyl acid to the wound. This will phenyl help acid. ensure that the problem of ingrowth will not reoccur in this toe. So, should we just jam that down there as well, Dr. Jeff? Is that what we're going to do? When you're done inserting the acid, I'll remove the tourniquet and we'll finish up. Okay. Dr. Jeff's brand antibiotic cream. Who the hell are you, man? Jesus. Okay, that's fine. Wait. Place this... it against the toe and wrap it in a gauze bandage. What kind of cream is this, Dr. Jeff? What are you doing here, buddy? Fantastic job. Thank you. Since there was some obvious infection, our patient will be sent home with a prescription for some antibiotics. We'll also need to tell our patient to keep the wound dry, clean the wound regularly, and replace the bandage two to three times a day. Okay. While our patient's toenail isn't likely to regrow, his condition is likely to return if he doesn't take care of his feet. This includes wearing proper fitting shoes, properly trimming his toenails, and keeping his feet clean and dry. What? And that's how we remove an ingrown toenail. Okay. You did a great job today. Th thank you. While you're here, try your hand at one of our other surgeries here at SurgerySquad.com. Wow! Dr. Jeff, how to cook a turkey surgery? Mm. Learn about the prep and cooking of a Thanksgiving turkey. Click start to begin. That has got to be the greatest surgery I've ever heard of, guys. Seriously. I mean, it's 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 not easy to stick your, your fist up a turkey's ass, okay? That requires medical skill. Everybody knows that. <laughs> I was just going to ask, like, really, it doesn't grow back after you actually snip the toenail off? He just ends up with no toenail there for the rest of his life? That's weird. I thought it would, like, you know, just, just grow back out again. Now I'm getting worried, man. I don't I don't want that to happen to me. I don't want my toenails to start disappearing because they get a little bit ingrown. Okay? Help me, Dr. Jeff. Anyway, guys, I'm going to end this video here. If you want to see certain surgeries, just let me know down below. There's a whole bunch of these online, especially Surgery Squad. I think the, the Surgery Squad website has a whole bunch of these surgeries. There's uh, knee surgeries, hip surgeries, heart surgeries, brain surgeries, pretty much everything. So if you want to see something... Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, and I will see you next time. Goodbye. You know what? Fuck it, guys. We're playing the turkey surgery. How to cook a turkey. Before you scrub in, this surgery may contain graphic procedures inappropriate for children or squeamish adults. Don't forget it, guys, okay? If you don't want to see this turkey get violated, you better click away right now. Hello, and welcome to Surgery Squad's Thanksgiving special. How to cook a turkey. I'm Dr. Jeff, and I'll be guiding you through this delicious procedure today. Chef Dr. Jeff, guys. Chef Dr. Jeff. Nothing helps me relax more after a challenging day in the OR than cooking a fine meal. And I especially love doing it for family and friends at a big Thanksgiving dinner. Sure you do, the buddy. The best of honor at any Thanksgiving dinner is the turkey. Today, we're going to show you how to prepare cook and carve your bird to help make this Thanksgiving and others to come delicious and memorable. I can't wait, Jeff. I can't freaking Just wait. Just like we do for a surgery, we have to make sure we have all the tools necessary for the procedure. Here's what I use. A roasting pan with handles and a rack, good for catching drippings as the bird bakes, aluminum foil, a stick of butter softened at room temperature, kosher salt, freshly ground black pepper, and a meat thermometer. Before you cook your bird, you must make sure it is completely thawed in your refrigerator. Never leave a turkey out to thaw at room temperature, because that might cause bacteria to form. Our patient, uh, subject today, is a 24-pound turkey who is nicely thawed and ready to be the big star. Can this you is... pat the turkey dry with some paper towels as I remove the gizzards and neck from the body cavity? This is fucked up, dude. You're, you're treating the turkey like a patient. You know it's dead, right? This is disrespectful. Just, just, just make the animal into a delicious meal and eat it, okay? That's clearly the most respectable thing you can do to an animal after it's dead. Jesus. Click anywhere indicated using a paper towel to pat the turkey dry. Here you go. Pat, pat. Mmm. How do you like that turkey? You enjoying it? I bet you are. Great work. Let's wash up and get cooking. Okay. No matter what size bird you're working with, it's important to remember to keep it moist. If the bird is too dry, your guests might have to lie and tell you how delicious the turkey is when they really wish they were eating a TV dinner. Here's how I prepare a turkey to keep it moist. First, rub the softened stick of butter deeply onto the turkey skin, which will make it nice and brown as it bakes. Dr. Jeff? Dr. Jeff? Are we talking about turkey here? 
or are you suggesting some weird shit in the bedroom? Because I know I need to keep my my bird moist in the bedroom. That that that's you know a given. But I don't want to rub a stick of butter over my bird. Okay, that's not what I'm into. But I'll do it for you. Ah! Sweet Jesus, the noise is coming out of this thing. Doctor Jeff, help me, Doctor Jeff. <laughs> Oh god, this is disgusting, dude. Why would you do this to me? Why why the sound effects? There's so many better sound effects you could use for, for a stick of butter rub, rubbing over a turkey. But you chose this one. Okay, I'm done. I'm done touching the turkey with my butter stick. Now what? Good. Next, sprinkle a generous amount happening. of salt and pepper all I can over hear the bird it. for seasoning. Okay, I'm gonna just put some salt and pepper all over my bird now, guys. Shake it up, baby, shake it up. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh, it's on rapid fire now. It sounds much better than when I rubbed the uh, butter over it, buddy. I think this is looking pretty good here. Okay, let's continue. Great. The bird's all seasoned up, but not quite ready for the oven. Some folks traditionally fill the cavity with their stuffing mixture. I don't mainly because it introduces some problems. First, there's a chance that bacteria can find its way into the bird. Also, if you cook your bird to the perfect temperature, the stuffing will be too dry. It's best to bake the stuffing as a separate dish. Instead of stuffing, let's put in some aromatics, such as rosemary or sage, a stick or two of cinnamon, a whole lemon, onion sliced in half, or a handful of peeled garlic cloves. As the turkey cooks, so do these guys, and they'll release all kinds of flavors that will get right into the meat. Okay, so I should mm, stick these in my bird? This going to taste good. One more thing before we put it in the oven. Take a large piece of aluminum foil and form a tent over the bird. It will keep any moisture from evaporating. We'll take it off during the last 45 minutes of cooking so the bird can brown up. Okay, so you want my bird to pitch a tent, is what you're saying. And also, you want me to know that I can stick a full lemon in my bird if I want. That's not going to hurt, is it, Dr. Jeff? I mean, you're a doctor. I trust you. I trust your med medical, uh, you know, suggestions here. Let's just put the tent over the turkey. Oh, baby. Ready for the oven? Okay, we've got ours preheated at 325 degrees. Generally, we'll cook a turkey at about 15 minutes per pound. Our turkey weighs 24 pounds, so multiply 15 by 24 to get 360. Then divide that by 60 to get 6 hours. Wow. There's nothing this guy can't do, guys. He's good at math. He's good at surgery. He's good at cooking turkeys. He's good at sexual innuendos. I love this guy. Okay, turkey's going in the oven now. This was a great time. Thank you. All right. Let's put the game on the TV and get ready to greet our guests. <laughs> Five hours later, they're all enjoying my delicious bird stuffed with There's lemon. There's about 45 minutes left. Time to remove our foiled tent and check the temperature. Okay, so the guests are already here by the sound of it? That's, that's cool. Mmm, smelling great. There's some nice drippings in the pan for gravy. Everything seems okay, but let's see where we are with the bird's temperature. This bird looks terrifying, Dr. Jeff. Most turkeys come with this little pop-up device that's supposed to tell you when your bird is done. Thing is, it's not always accurate. That's where you need the meat thermometer. It's going to give you the most accurate temperature. We're looking for a temperature of 161 degrees for the white meat and about 180 degrees for the dark. Okay, so now we're sticking some thermometers into our bird, guys. Oh, baby. Is it good? 160? Oh, we need to put it in there for another minute or two because it's only at 160 and needs to be at 161 in uh, the other one. 150. So it's not quite oh. ready yet. Okay, never mind. Let's leave the foil off so the turkey can get a nice layer of browning on it. I've got to get back to my guests. Yeah, make me do all the work then, asshole. Here he is, all nice and brown and ready for carving. First, cut here in this thin layer of skin that holds the thigh to the breast. Cut all the way down to your carving surface and stop when you reach the joint. Can I stop now? Because I don't really want to have to carve the turkey as well. You didn't tell me this is part of it? Great. Now just take your hand, washed of course, and press down on the thigh. Remove it when you hear the socket pop. Then just cut it off. 
Remember, guys, this is about a turkey, okay? Don't grab your own thighs and pop them out of socket and shit. That's not cool. Okay. One turkey thigh has been taken out of the turkey. Put that on a separate plate to carve up later. Now let's begin carving the breast. Can we just be done? I'm 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 down with just being nice done with this whole clean. turkey carving thing. I'd to have you over to carve our Christmas turkey too. Shut up, Jeff. Wow, those are some delicious looking slices. Mm. Great job. Thank you. Let's just go ahead and eat. See you after dinner. What? Uh. Our subject is well gone. Are you not? But everyone else is recovering nicely. Did you invite no me to dinner? No one rest thoroughly to let their food digest. Guys might need to loosen their belts a few notches for comfort. Your guests may also stray into the kitchen for leftovers. That's normal and encouraged. It means less you have to clean up. You did a great job today. Thanks for your help in the kitchen. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving, and we'll see you back in the OR working on one of our other surgeries here at SurgerySquad.com. Virtual colonoscopy. Great. Well, Dr. Jeff, I got one thing for you, okay? This. This guy made me do all the work, he made me cook his turkey, and then he was like, thanks for cooking the turkey. I'll see you after dinner. And then he left and he ate the turkey and he didn't come back until he was done and I didn't get any. What bullshit is that? What bullshit is that? But anyway, guys, now I'm really going to end this video. I hope you enjoyed the little bonus turkey surgery. I just thought it'd be fun to do. And it was interesting. Now I know how to cook my own turkey. Someday I'm going to do that. I've never cooked turkey before. Maybe now I will. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.